All right, so here we are in assignment five. I think we're, this is our ninth video in, and I think we're about halfway through uh, what we need to do. So I, I wanted to bring it back just to our files. It's been a while since we've worked on it. So how do we set them up? Because as we've seen, animation is all about being kind of organized and knowing where things are and trying not to make any really stu foolish mistakes, instead having a plan and working towards it. So the first thing, I'm going to just open up my sketch of my storyboard in preview and keep it kind of small and off to the side to reference. And I'll usually keep my, my references off to the right because I'm right-handed. This is all I need. And so far I've worked, worked through this part of the storyboard. Uh, this middle part should be fun because the whole middle action is introducing this new character and having some interaction between them. Next, I have two different Photoshop files I want to use. I want to open up my cropped assets file, which no longer is about panning in the environment. It's just about having the rain move, the texture fills change, the lighting change, and having my character kind of move around. All right, so I have a lot of assets here with and without his eyes closed. And it should already be on the last frame I created. And then the other file I need is my stage open in Photoshop. Now they're both here nested on this bar. I want to bring my stage out and I'm going to use command minus just to shrink it a little bit smaller so it's not as easily confused with my assets file. All right, so now that I have both, all I have to do is click on my stage to affect that. If I want to be very careful, I can make my, my assets file maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, why not make my stage a little bit bigger just by doing Command Plus. Click on it here. Come on. There we go. Make that a little bit bigger, just so it overlaps. And what's nice about that is I want to know if I'm affecting either the stage or the assets. And the way I'll know that if I let them overlap slightly, but I still want to see my sketch, <laughs> is that when I click on the stage, it will overlap with the layers. You see that, just that little border. And when I click on my assets, it will overlap. Okay, I also want to have enough room for my timeline down here because I'm going to be running some animation tests. So I believe the last thing I did was we ran an animation test of my, my stage frames. So let's click on stage. And just really quickly, I'm going to show you how to run an animation test. So you have the timeline showing. You can get to that by saying window timeline. And then you want to create a frame by frame animation. Click on frame animation, frame by frame. And now I use the window options, which are in this upper right hand corner. And I say make frames from layers. Now I'm doing this to my stage, not my assets. If I did it to my assets, I'd, I'd have something like 80 frames because there are so many more layers there. But in my stage, I've only created um, 11 clean frames so far. Then these are like pieces of film in a film strip that you put into a projection camera to animate. So now I have to set how long do I want each one to show. So I hold down shift, you know, from beginning to the end to select all of them. And then I use the time signature at the bottom. And I'm going to say other 0.3 seconds. That's my standard testing. It's about a third of a second, a little bit less. And then I want it to play through forever. And then you just hit play. And then I'll see here how my animation is working. And if I am really doing what I intended to do in this first, in these first three frames of my storyboard. Does it look like it's raining? Yes. Does he look like he's frolicking, kind of happy, it's kind of bright? Yeah. Now notice it took a 13 frames to get him just to move that much. And I have more to get him to move up closer. 
So I'm going to try to complete those quickly, so try to remind you how those assets work. So though playing through your animation test is a lot of fun and it shows you what's working, and I just wanted to test it to make sure that my, my system for creating the rain and the texture fills and the camera move all worked well to set the scene. Now my, my whole reason for having that camera move as fast as it is at the beginning is it shows us, it gives the viewer the idea that there's more of a setting here. You know, it's not just this guy in one little square. And that's going to pave the way for when I introduce this dinosaur now coming from this side. But if I want him to frolic a little bit longer and a little bit more, I need to um, bring over more frames. So here's the problem. Before I bring over more frames, I need to trash these frames, hold down shift and select all, Come on. from my timeline. And I do that by clicking on, there we go, clicking on the first one, making it difficult here, and then holding down shift, clicking on the last one, and then drag them all to the trash can. Never hit delete when you're dealing with timeline frames, because it will delete that whole layer <laughs> that, that uh, the frame is linked to. So instead you just drag them to the timeline trash. And then here I'm going to go ahead and shrink this. I need a little bit more real estate on screen here. Ah. Because my mouse is being really particular. All right, there we go. And I want to have just a little bit of overlap so I can see clearly when I'm in this, when I'm in my stage versus when I'm in my my assets. All right, so this is where I've been in my stage. I'm going to turn on my last frame. It's right there. I want to move my character from there, so I have to do that with assets. And so I go to my next pose. Remember, I pose my creature first. Turn off the old one. And then I play with the rain splash. I'm going to change to two here. And I'm going to up the opacity of it a little bit. Then I'm going to change to rain three to keep that moving. And yeah, that's a good finished frame. Now there's another way I can do it besides just doing um, the move tool. I go to my topmost turned on layer and I hit option or hold down option while I say layer merge visible. I can do the shortcut too, which is shift command E but that's like a lot to do while holding down option. I don't like four key shortcuts if I can help it. Now I could just use the move tool as I've done in the past, drag and drop it and lock it in here. But if I'm a little unsure of how well I can lock it in, or I've, I've just been bad at that in the past, then what I can do is hit, if everything's cropped, hit Command A to select it all. I have to be on my merge layer. Command C to copy it all click on my stage and command V to paste it in. And that will perfectly place it each time, as long as your resolution is the same. And then I always check it this way. Yeah, I don't like that the, the mist goes from over here to all of a sudden switching all the way over there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna change my rain mist a little bit. I'm gonna pick up the, the intensity of the rain a little bit. So I'm gonna delete that frame I just brought over and instead change these assets. So delete the merged one hit Command D to deselect, and then I'm going to turn on, let's see, Rain Splash 3 and 2, and just play with their opacities a little bit. So each time I'll play with their opacities a little bit, and that's about it. And then I can even do it with number 1, so the rain's really going to pick up here. Okay, so now this is the new frame, so how can I do that? Click on the topmost turned on frame, hold down option, say layer merge visible, then hit command A, command C, go to the stage, command V to paste it in. And that looks a little bit better. All right.
And is the, the sky still moving? Yes, absolutely. So I'm going to keep that rain cycle. Go back to my assets, hit Command D to deselect, get rid of that frame, turn on the next character, play with the opacities a little bit, almost randomly, but never too much at any one time, and then keep on going through this rain cycle. And then I can animate pretty quickly now. Uh, hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, Command, and click on Stage, Command V. And I can check each frame there. Nice. And he's, you see how he's getting bigger and the shadows underneath him? All of that's working well. Hit Command D to deselect in my assets, go to the next pose. This time he has his eyes closed because I had already animated that into the asset. Play with the rain opacities a little bit. And go back to rain three, or maybe rain two. Now go to the topmost layer, say, hold down Option, say Layer, Merge Visible, Command A to select all, Command C to copy it, click on your stage file, Command V to paste it in, and so far so good. Go back to your assets, hit Command D to deselect, delete that frame, move to the next one, and we just keep repeating this. Play with my opacities. Let's see if you even need to go to the topmost layer. I know you need to be on a layer that's turned on. So let's try Option, Layer, Merge Visible. Yeah, and it doesn't really matter where you are as long as. Let's see if it made a difference. As long as you're on a layer that's turned on. Option, layer, merge visible. Yeah, so either way. Command A, Command C, Command V, paste it in. And you can always check it just by turning your layers on and off. I'm liking the way that rain is looking. This might be the most believable rain I've created in a demo so far. Command D to deselect. If you don't hit Command D to deselect, then when you hit delete, it will just delete everything in the layer, but it won't get rid of the layer. So you have to hit Command D to actually delete the layer, the merged layer you created. You don't want a lot of empty layers to be building in your assets needlessly. Okay, last one. He's really up close to the camera. Almost last one. And then I'm just going to walk him backwards a little bit, which will be fun. So now... He's up close to the camera. I want this to be a lot of rain. And I'm going to start, you know, upping the opacities of the rain splash a little bit more until eventually I can just kind of leave them like that. Really strong. And how I can start upping the, the intensity of the rain is to start playing with the different layering and opacities of the rain. So now I'll have two of them on at once. And you'll see how that makes a difference. So you play with your puppet assets in any way that you think works. Hold down Option, Layer, Merge Visible, Command A, Command C, and paste it over with Command B. Okay, let's see. Oh, but the rain didn't move. So that's why it's always good to check it. That would be a problem. So I like everything I created, except I forgot to move through the rain cycle. Silly rabbit. So I can have multiples on, but they still need to cycle through so it looks like it moves. So let's just increase the opacity. And there's a few ways to do that. I can open up and I can actually duplicate it. 